Hey everyone, and welcome to the Grow Hemp series. Today, we'll be showing you part two of A Tale of Two Hydroponic Plants. For part two, we'll be covering the success of the two plants, but not without a couple of weird bumps along the way. We're starting this grow with an auto-flowering seed, the one located on the bottom left, and this is growing alongside the auto-flowering seed that was used in the previous grow log. Once the seedling was ready to be transplanted, we're putting it in an ebb and flow hydroponic setup. And for a recap of this hydroponic build, let's take a look at what I said in the previous ebb and flow grow log. This ebb and flow setup is as basic as it gets, and it's designed so I can easily interchange this between any two types of hydroponic grow systems while still sharing one water reservoir. So we have a water reservoir storage tote, the plant tray, which is just a three and a half gallon bucket held up by a smaller storage bin. Inside there's a water pump connected to a flood pipe and a drain pipe for when the water reaches the desired height. Let's give it a quick test. Fill it up with hydrogen clay pellets. Put in a plant and we're good to go. And we're back. For the ebb and flow system, I'm staying with a four time a day flood since it worked well the last time, but lowering the flood times to 15 minutes, which is still longer than needed, but I was working with a mechanical timer and that's as short as it gets. Other than that, since this setup shares everything with the previous grow log, from nutrient reservoir to grow lights to plant fans, I'll skip over covering that again. While the auto flowering plant next to this one that's utilizing the drip system is growing a lot quicker and taller in this short period of time, this plant grew at a slower pace and also flowered later too, so it was a lot easier to manage early on. And here's where the ebb and flow system went haywire. Previously, when I used this setup, the plant roots did eventually get into the ebb and flow drain pipe, but once it was exposed to the air inside of the drain pipe, it air pruned itself pretty fast. 
This time, though, the roots were able to grow fast enough through the drain pipe to reach the nutrient reservoir below it, and I didn't really think much about it until those roots grew so much that it completely clogged the drain pipe, causing the entire ebb and flow system to blow up once the water had nowhere to drain to and started to overflow. So I had to make a choice on what to do. I can either take the entire plant out of the bucket, removing all the roots in the drain pipe, covering up the drain pipe with some weed block, and then putting it all back together, or just completely shut off the ebb and flow system and hope that the small batch of roots growing through the drain pipe is enough to feed the plants. Obviously, I went with the easier of the two choices, especially after taking a look at just how much roots have grown in the nutrient water, which is insane, considering that all of it has to flow through the small ebb and flow filter. And of course, to aerate the roots, I added an air pump, essentially making this into a water culture system. Either way, the plants kept growing at a good pace even after the ebb and flow system was changed out. So I didn't really have to deal with any other issues when I changed the systems. Although, next time I'll be sure to cover the drain filter with something to completely block out the roots from getting into it. Even though the plant started off growing slower than the drip plant, over time as this plant started to flower, it slowly outgrew the drip plant. It is now growing awfully close to the Cobb LED grow lights, to the point where the top stems are starting to burn up. But the way the grow light set up made it kind of hard to adjust in height, since I'm just using the included wire clips together to hang them up. So initially, I started to use high stress training to keep the height somewhat in check. However, the plant kept getting higher and higher in height. And in the end, I just got some bungee cords to hang up the grow light instead. And this way, if I need to raise the grow light a little more, I can always tie a knot on the cord to raise it a little bit at a time. The drip plant has been removed at this point, and this plant pretty much instantly started taking up the extra space left by that plant as the bud started to fatten up. Now we're just on cruise control while we wait for the buds to fatten up.
near the end of the growth. There seemed to be a nutrient imbalance causing necrosis on the leaf tips of the top of the plant. So I swapped out the water reservoir which seemed to correct it. And we're near the end of the grow, so it's not too bad. A close look at the trichomes now show that the plant's ready for harvest. And it's a good thing because there's basically no room left in the closet for the plant to expand to. A look at the roots also show just how much the root system has been able to expand through the drain pipe, which is crazy considering that the drain pipe is less than an inch wide. And having unlimited space for the roots to expand to inside of the water reservoir really paid off because the final size of the plant is the largest auto flowering plant I've ever grown. But yeah, I harvested the plant by cutting off batches of stems at a time. And then hung them all up. I then went through each stem and removed just the large fan leaves off of them before letting them dry for a little over a week. Now that they're ready to be stored, I'm just doing a quick dry trim before placing all the buds in mason jars. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.